बी रेडी फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट मिस्टर वाइस चेयरमैन सर आई एम हैप्पी दैट दिस डिस्कशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एरियर्स बिकॉज देयर इज नो डाउट दैट If this is the most serious problem that the entire system of administration of justice facing today, then it is the problem of arrears. Evidently, it is on account of these arrears that delays take place in settling the disputes, and if delays take place in settling the disputes, the very purpose of settling them really becomes difficult if a person has a legal problem and somebody is contravening his legal right unless he can have the redress within a reasonable time hardly any purpose would be served by providing a procedure for redressal of grievances i am entirely in agreement with the honorable member who has spoken on this half an hour discussion highlighting the problem of arrears pending in various courts now sir as i submitted in this house on the last occasion when this matter was being discussed in answer to a question i had pointed out and i still maintain my view that the most important factor which is responsible for these delays in the high courts and of these growing arrears in the high courts is because of not having sufficient judge strength in the various high courts now sir i would choose the conference of the chief justices the yardstick which has been uniformly accepted by every authority who has the experience of working in the high courts is that 650 cases per judge is a proper yardstick to be applied in determining the average there are some big cases there are some short cases and so on the judges may also sit on benches two judges may sit on a bench for hearing a case but the overall calculation is that the total number of cases that are decided by a high court judge in one year results is an average of 650 cases per judge per year are considered as proper and reasonable rate of disposal and of working every year we know how many cases are being instituted of course there are various factors responsible for the increase in the number of cases i had listed on the last occasion by which the existing rights and liabilities of the people are being altered and so on now i find that other honorable members who do not happen to be lawyers keep on advancing such attractive arguments that we get charmed and we keep on listening and particularly when those honorable members happen to be lady members and they make such beautiful speeches then the house goes on and on and half an hour discussion may become half a month discussion so what i was saying was i got these figures worked out and i found that by applying this yardstick of 650 cases per judge the following is the requirement we know that in these high courts so many cases were instituted 
in 1986 therefore if you apply the yardstick of 650 what would be the normal strength which would be able to cope with as many cases which are being instituted every day as would get disposed of the same day so that errors would not go on increasing in fact there would be a decrease in the errors then what would be the strength and what would be the strength when the errors go on decreasing i found you need extra strength for all this by working out at 650 cases per judge take for instance the karnataka high court the sanctioned strength is 14 permanent and 3 additional the total sanctioned strength is 17 and i find that by applying this yardstick of 650 cases per judge the number of cases which were instituted in the high court in 1986 would require 33 judges whether they are permanent or additional that does not make any difference because that is only a matter of approach otherwise they dispose of the same quantity of work so a strength of 33 judges would be required to keep pace with the institutions every day if you want to liquidate the area first of all the strength of 17 must be raised to 33 moreover you will have to have some extra strength in order to clear the backlog it is a question of calculation how many judges you should have for how many years in order to clear the backlog by which time that the backlog would be cleared for clearing the backlog some extra strength would be required and now it is true that before the constitution was enacted most of the high courts except some did not have this very useful writ jurisdiction at that time whatever the government did was final because so many acts were passed with the result right or wrong whatever the government did or said became final